here with forward Dylan saying, uh, Dylan, this has been a crazy ride for you guys. Um, just take us through this whirlwind that you guys have been going through, uh, winning games and in, in uh, different places and, and uh, keep on surviving, surviving and advancing. Yeah, I, I think we've been road tripping all tournament. It's been pretty fun going, you know, all across the country. We're going to the West Coast. We were down in Kentucky, Nashville, really cool places to play at. It's fun to see all the stadiums, but, uh, you know, making the NCAA tournament, that was a big goal of ours and, and making a deep run. It's just something special. You know, in, in this team, we knew that we could do something like that. And uh, it's just kind of surreal. And we're we're enjoying the moment, living living in the moment. What are you seeing from them? I know it's a quick turnaround preparing for a team, especially a team that um, is so far out of the way for you guys. You probably don't have much uh, common opponents with, with Portland. So what are you seeing from them? Yeah, that's that's, that's a really good point. Um, we don't know much about them just because they are on the West Coast and they play in the WCC. So um, looking at Portland, we know they're a good team. They're a good team every single year. Um, I think the last time that we played them was back in 2017, maybe. So uh, we're going to study up on them this week, see what we can figure out about them and uh, devise a game plan from there. Here was senior midfielder Eric Condardy. Eric, uh, it's been a wild ride for you guys um, through the MAC championship, these last two games, and then say tournament. Um, now you have Portland and uh, a trip to the Sweet 16 on tap. So just take us through your emotions and the team's emotions in this this wild ride. Yeah, we said it at the beginning of the year that it was going to be it was going to be a tough road. Um, we took it day by day, game by game, and uh, honestly, I don't know if I really expected all of this. But uh, it's worked out great. We've had some really difficult wins on the road these last two games. Uh, the guys are buzzing. Everybody's excited for this game. Um, and I don't think that anyone doubts us. I think that we all think that we can make a run and honestly win the national championship. You, you say that you might not have expected this, but um, when you guys started to really get clicking in the regular season um, after that, that loss early on in the season against Butler, um, did you guys kind of feel like, hey, man, we, we can we can make a run at, at the national title? Yeah, after that Butler game, something something just started clicking with the guys. Uh, we had a long discussion in the locker room after that game and really just talked through all the things that we struggled with. And as soon as we started to go on that, I think it was a nine-game win streak, we started to really believe, like, okay, this team is really special. Um, so, yeah, as soon as that streak started to get going, that's when I started to think to myself, maybe this team can make a long run in the tournament. Here with Mike Melarani. Uh Mike, it's been a crazy uh, last couple of weeks for you guys, starting with the Akron game and, and the MAC championship and then Louisville and then Lipscomb. Now uh, you're heading out to the great uh, Northwest with uh, Portland. So mm -hmm. well, what's this ride like, especially for a guy like you who's been in this program for a long time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's been my fifth year and it's been honestly nothing like, I, like I've ever been a part of. You know, we... Uh, when I came in in 2018, I heard stories about everything that that 2017 team was able to do. And, you know, it's it's been trying to just get back to that point. You know, we have we felt like we've been left out of, of the tournament in past years. So uh, to win that Akron MAC championship and to make sure we punched our ticket and took it into our own hands, you know, that was that was huge for us. And we've just been kind of riding that wave ever since. You know, we we go to Louisville in a big time ACC school and, and we and we carry most of the game there and, and beat them and then uh to be a top 10 team in Lipscomb on the road as well has been it's, it's been unbelievable and uh I just can't say how much I love this team and uh how fun it has been to be a part of it uh obviously Portland Portland is a is a school that you haven't seen in in a couple of years there's nobody on the team currently I know the coaching staff have been out there before but uh a team in the WCC with with not many common opponents what are you seeing from them scouting them uh going into Saturday um I see uh, they have a lot of big players just like us I mean I think that um watching their game we just uh, we just need to play our game and like we've been doing the last three games um we we've been absolutely I think the last three games has been our, our absolute best and we just need to go out there and show it again and show that um, we're not going to change, and they're going to have to make a change for us. Here are Matt Lockwood. Uh, Matt, this has been a crazy last couple of weeks, starting with the, the couple Akron games. You finally get past them after two tries, and we win the most important one, getting an NCAA tournament, Louisville, uh, Lipscomb, and now, now Portland. So just take us through you personally and the emotions that have been going on uh, on this run here. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been really exciting, to be honest. We knew that 
Akron, if we could get past Akron, that, that would give us a lot of confidence. And winning the MAC tournament at Akron, you know, I, I think it just kind of gave us that confidence boost heading into the tournament, uh, especially going down to a place like Louisville where they're a top ACC program year in, year out, and getting getting the dub there and heading down to Nashville and playing a very good Lipscomb team. You know, I think the team's just been taking everything as it comes, and the the form that we're in at the moment, a lot of that has to do with our confidence as a team. Portland, uh, obviously not a common opponent, but might be more, a little bit more common for you coming from uh, Utah. So uh, what is your familiarity with them and their style of play and, and scouting them for a Saturday? Yeah, I mean, Portland's always been a, a top team. Like I said, I'm from Utah. I've, I've known about the uni University of Portland for a very long time. My club sent some very top players to go play for Portland, and they were, they were lights out for them. Um, so I, I've kind of got a lot of ties over there. Um, so it's exciting. Merlot Field's a very, it can be a very competitive environment. So for the guys, you know, I, ha I have no doubt that that stadium's going to be packed out Saturday, you know, for a, what's going to be the biggest game of the season for both teams. Uh, but I think, I think this team thrives off that, you know, like we, we're very good on the road and like I said, uh, there, it's not a common opponent, but for us, like, I think it's a breath of fresh air. You know, we've been playing all these Midwest teams and we've been on the east side of the country all year. And now we get the opportunity to fly out to Portland and experience something new for Thanksgiving. You know, it's going to be exciting, but the team's looking forward, looking forward to it for sure. Here with Daniel Nimick. Uh, Daniel, it's been a crazy ride for you guys. Um, before we get into the ride, obviously, the game winner against Lipscomb. So can you just take us through um, that play and and what you saw and what you did to, to lift the Broncos to a win. Yeah, so uh, JR, Jonathan Robinson wins a corner um, and then Eric Carnegie's on that. He's been on our set pieces all season. And um, I think maybe five of my eight goals have come off Eric Carnegie assists from set pieces. So we knew we had that link up. Um, he put a beautiful ball in and I, I was just in the right place at the right time, able to head it in. Um, and yeah, it was just a big relief getting that getting that game winner and, and seeing out the game. And we're just super excited to head into the Sweet 16 matchup now. What's it been like uh, on this run? Obviously, you have the two Akron games back to back, and then you get the, the most important one, the third one of the season, getting into the tournament. And uh, I've been traveling a lot, traveling around the country and, and winning games. So what, what's it been like on the road and, and, and the vibe around the team right now? Yeah, we've um, we went on the road to Akron, got the tie there, which meant they ended up clinching the regular season and, and we regrouped, came back and, and were able to get the win on the road again. Um, and then we carried that momentum into the, to the national tournament, going on the road to Louisville. Um, playing both overtimes there, playing 110 minutes and, and grinding out that win, um, carrying that into Lipscomb, where we were able to get the win on the road again. And now we head on the road again to Portland. It's just it's just been all over the place. But I think wherever we go, we're always going to be able to employ our style and make it make it a, a Bronco soccer match, as, as coach likes to say. And um, we're always going to outwork our opponents. And, and from what we've seen so far, our opponents haven't been able to to keep up with the intensity that we bring. And, and we're gonna we're gonna look to do that again this weekend. I right, here with head coach Chad Wiseman. Coach, uh, first question: It's been a whirlwind for you guys. You've been traveling all over the country and you've been winning games. So, uh, just take us through these last uh, couple games uh, with your team. Yeah, I think it really starts with the MAC championship at uh, the University of Akron, and uh, you know, winning it on their field in the fashion that we did, uh, dominating dominating that game from our perspective and having it being played the way that we want to, and you know, singing our fight song and hoisting the trophy at the University of Akron is is an epic day. Right, and that leads us into the NCAA tournament selection Monday. And if you remember last week, we, uh, we told the entire nation, "Listen, we're not just happy to be in the NCAA tournament. We expect uh, to win games in the NCAA tournament." And our challenge, the first challenge, was uh, at the University of Louisville. A really talented team, um, you know, some really dynamic players. And uh, you know, to be perfectly honest with you, I thought we took it, took the game to Louisville. Uh, very dominating performance. Um, you know, found our goal and. Um, you know, a defensive mistake late, which equalized it. And so now we head into overtime, right? When you concede late like that, sometimes that can be 
a script uh, that you don't want to read, right? Uh, but not, not, our leaders wouldn't let that happen in between the you know regulation and overtime. You know, there's a lot of things said in the huddle, most of it driven by our captains. And we come out and Charlie Sharp finds the game winner in the opening minutes and, and we defend well the rest of the game and we're ready to move on, right? And that's a, that's a historical moment, right? It's our first NCAA victory on the road again, and it's our first ACC victory right, ever in our program. I think those are big hurdles for us. And it takes us down to, to Nashville, to the Music City, which um, we were certainly prepared to, 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 to uh, enter. And you know, we packed for seven days last week. We didn't pack for three. Um, and we knew that Lipscomb was going to pose some different problems. I mean, what, what, what a season they're having, right? Um, and then we get to game day. Like, we're the only team in the entire nation that they played that shut them out. And we shut them out on their field. Right? And we take our opportunity in the second half, a uh, great ball in by Eric Connerty and, and our captain, Daniel Nimick, finishes it. And then we kind of hold on and do the things that you need to do to, to, to advance. And we're the only NCAA tournament team that uh, won two games, both on the road and opening weekends. You know, if that tells you anything, I think it just confirms, you know, uh, you know the NCAA and, and probably the rest of the media outlets just not giving the boys the respect that they deserve and the respect that they have earned. So you guys do feel like you had that chip on your shoulder uh, going through these last couple of games to earn the respect that you, you felt like you deserve? I don't think it's so much a chip. I think it's just more like, all right, if you want to keep underestimating us, we'll keep showing you, you know, how good we are. Right. And one thing's for clear. We have some of the very best college soccer players in the entire nation right here in Kalamazoo. Right. And they've been here for three, four, some of them five years. And and now they're putting the season together. Uh, I think that would show the rest of the college nation exactly how talented they are. What's it, like you just said it. Uh, you have a lot of local kids, a lo lot of Michiganders on, on your team. So what, what's it like making a national noise with with local guys? And, and what's it say to the, the young soccer players growing up in the area that you can come here and, and make noise in the national tournament? Yeah, I mean, this isn't the first time that we've made the Sweet 16. I mean, we've made the Sweet 16 two times now in five years, right? And we haven't changed our recruiting methods. Right? We're still recruiting the same types of kids in the same areas. Um, but I think certainly if you're growing up in, in West Michigan right now, I mean, uh, you want to be a Bronco, right? And I would say if you're growing up in the state of Michigan, I mean, look at our dominance in the state of Michigan. We're 12-0 and 0 in the last four years, right? We're the only team still playing. Um, so, so certainly from the outside looking in, we're, we're, we're getting some national attention, I would say. Uh, but, you know, that doesn't change what we do. It takes a special person to be able to play in – the Bronco soccer um, culture in our, uh, you know, within our athletic department, it, it takes a special part and, and certain things need to align. All right. And we got that group right now. And at the end of the day, you know, COVID has been very challenging for everybody. Um, and, uh, and, you know, there are some good things I think that came out of it. And I think you look at guys like Mike Mellorani and Eric Connerty. I mean, they got their extra COVID year. They wouldn't be here otherwise. They're two great leaders. We're able to pick up Matt Lockwood and Hunter Morris and, and as graduate transfers also with the COVID year. So maybe that's the silver lining, you know, of, of a very horrible uh, set of time in NCAA athletics and in the world in general. Um, so that's kind of how I would look at that. Going out to Portland, obviously a team that's not in your region, out in the Northwest region, you might not have that many common opponents with them. So scouting them, what are you seeing from them and, and the challenge that uh, obviously in the NCAA tournament with, with the short time, but what are you seeing from them? Yeah, well, I mean, I think that all 16 teams that remain in the tournament right now are elite teams, right? You don't get here by accident. Um, they're going to pose some different problems than, than the previous two games. Um, you know, very familiar with, with the coach out there. Um, you know, ironically, in 2017, we played Portland out at Portland the same year we made the Sweet 16. So um, none of the players have that experience, but certainly the coaching staff does. Um, but like, listen, we're going to have to study up on them here in the next couple of days as well. Um, uh, as I look at that match, I think it's going to be a match that uh, is going to be very entertaining. Right. And I think it's not so much what they do. I think it's more about let's us keep doing what we do. Uh, and, and so far, every team that we've played, when we do what we do, it, 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 it's a struggle for teams. And I would expect the same thing when we go out to Portland. But we, we got to lock in on some of their special players because we know they have some special players that can have some game-changing moments. Um, and, and, and as we get closer and closer to the match, uh, we'll get more and more dialed in there. Coach, best of luck. Thanks for talking to us. All right, thank you. Go Broncos.